Now let us actually explore details with respect to managing directories while running scoop import command. Already we have seen how to perform scoop import either by using warehouse directory or target directory. If you specify warehouse directory like this, it will actually create a subdirectory in this location using the table name from which we are trying to get the data into HDFS. And then it will actually create files in that location and it will write the results which are queried from the database into that location. That is with respect to warehouse directory. If it is the target directory, it will directly create files in the location which is specified here. Now what if we actually run scoop import command by exactly specifying the same location either with warehouse directory or target directory. So here I'll be copy pasting this command up to this point. As we have already ran this earlier by pointing to this location called user training scoop import. There is a subdirectory under user training scoop import by name order items and you can see that it actually failed. Okay. Apart from failing like this, with exception if the target directory exists, we might want to run scoop import every day and as it will contain new snapshot from the previous snapshot, we have to either overwrite or if we are trying to capture the delta, we might have to append to the existing directory. So when we actually run scoop import multiple times, either we'll try to overwrite the data in the target location if we try to run that command on daily basis or if we capture delta on daily basis, we just want to append to this location. So there are ways to do so. But by default, it will fail saying that directory already exists. Now, if you want to overwrite this target directory and write the new, uh, new output of the scoop import command into the exact same location, we have to specify additional control argument called as delete target directory. In this case, for the demonstration purpose, we are copying the same data again from the MySQL database into this uh, directory. Um, as our tables are static, we will be getting same exact 172,198 records. But in real world scenarios, it will actually copy the data uh, of the time when the scoop import is run. And typically, the table would have been changed since the last scoop import run. So to get this snapshot on regular basis from the source system into HDFS, we use this delete target directory, which will delete the existing target directory and then reload the complete snapshot of the table from the database into this HDFS location. Again, as we are using warehouse directory, it will create a subdirectory called order items, which is nothing but table name he here in this location. And then it will copy data to that location. So once the import is done, we can actually say Hadoop FS hyphen LS and we should be able to validate that data is overwritten into the existing directory. Earlier it failed saying that directory already exists. Now it is actually running the job. While it is running, let us copy this path and we'll be using Hadoop FS hyphen LS on that path with order items as subdirectory and we'll see the results. Now the import is successful and we can run Hadoop FS hyphen LS and paste this and hit enter. And you can see the two subdirectories orders and order items. In this case, we are interested in order items because that is what is uh, reloaded again using delete target directory. And you can see the files which contain the same exact data because our tables are static at this time. That being said, if you want to capture delta on daily basis and if you just want to load the delta into this target location, then we actually say hyphen hyphen append then delete target directory. Let me copy command up to here and then paste it and then say training scoop import and then let us say append. And typically we do not query the entire table like this. We will filter to identify the delta and we will only append the delta and we'll actually see how to filter while using append to capture the delta and store into HDFS at a later point in time. But here you just have to understand that by using append, it will actually create new set of files in the existing directory when the scoop import is run. And both this delete target directory as well as append will work with target directory as well. In this case, we have demonstrated using warehouse directory. It will work with target directory as well. The actual commands with uh, delete target directory or append is available here also. As we copied entire data set from the table using append, now if I run Hadoop FS hyphen LS user training scoop import order underscore items, we will see eight files. So zero to three are created earlier. As part of this second run, it has created the files from four to seven. And again, it created four files because it, we are using the default number of threads, which is nothing but four when we actually ran this. 
But if you look at the example which, uh, which I have given, I have specified number of mappers as only one, in which case it will only create one file every time you run the scoop import rather than four files. So the number of files is based upon this number of mappers. By default, it is four even if you do not specify it. Okay. So that being said, this is how you can actually manage directories. There are genuine scenarios where we will be using this. The first one is to actually have exact snapshot of the source table which might be changing over a period of time on regular basis. In that case, we'll be using delete target directory which will delete the target location and copy the data. And second one is we might want to capture delta on regular basis and only append that delta into the existing directory. And for that, we can use append instead of failing whenever we try to capture the delta. Okay. So that being said, as we have understood scoop simple import and also how to manage directories, now we have to explore several other control arguments which is there as part of this documentation. We will try to cover at least 70% of these things and then we will take it uh, further into other aspects of scoop import which is nothing but scoop hive import and then we will actually get into scoop export as well.